Today I'm going to talk about the liquefaction-induced lateral spreading. Liquefaction-induced lateral spreading is the displacement of soil during an earthquake due to the liquefaction of underlying soil. In order for displacement to be considered lateral spreading, uh, the spread must occur on mild slopes from 0.3 to 5 percent, underlain by loose sand with shallow water table. Seemingly large damages due to lateral spreading can be attributed to lateral spreads that are rather common in developed areas during large-scale earthquakes. Lateral spreads occur in gentle slopes that appear to be stable and the potential hazard is not recognized. Even when a site is identified as being susceptible to lateral spreading, ground deformations and patterns are difficult to predict, and movements of soils induce large loads on pipelines. Bridges are susceptible to large damages due to lateral spreading due to their close proximity to water and their small, allowable foundation displacement. Pipelines are also greatly affected by lateral spreading, mostly because they are located along property lines or easements, which typically consist of looser, uncompacted soil. Pipelines are required to resist bending forces when the lateral spread moves perpendicular to the pipeline, and also tension and compression forces when the lateral spread moves along the pipeline. There's been many techniques implemented to attempt to mitigate the damage due to liquefaction. These include relocation of facilities, which many times is uh, not possible because the structure is either already existing or uh, some other reasons, or ground improvements, which include densification, vertical drains of some sort to reduce the moisture in the soil, and soil modification. There has also been attempts to support the lateral spreading using in-ground retaining walls or piles of some sort. In order to predict the lateral spreading, you must first be able to predict the liquefaction that causes the lateral spreading. Currently, empirical methods are widely used. Um, the one most commonly used is comparing the cyclic stress ratio to the cyclic resistance ratio. Cyclic stress ratio is the seismic demand placed on the soil determined by peak horizontal acceleration and overburden pressure. Cyclic resistance ratio is the capacity of the soil to resist liquefaction determined through in situ tests such as FPT, CPT, and DPT. There are two processes that are used in development of liquefaction hazard maps. The first is the um, determination of the liquefaction potential index, which is the prediction of the severity of the liquefaction at the surface. The second one I'm going to talk about a little bit later. To study the lateral spreading in the controlled conditions, researchers have developed scaled laboratory models. They include shape table models and centrifuge models. Mainly, these models are qualitative. The shape table model is done by taking a one meter by one meter uh, square <coughs> soil that's typically half a meter deep and placing it on a shape table, uh, applying vibration, <coughs> and studying what happens. The model is completely qualitative. The model shows the tension cracks and the subsidence development at the head of the slope. The displacement orientation, the, the, small, the smaller displacements and heaves near the toe of the slope. Unfortunately, the model does not model the stress path, overburden pressure, or boundary conditions as well. The centrifuge model essentially just adds on to the shape table model. What the centrifuge model does is it takes that, that same soil um, with layers and places it on a geotechnical centrifuge. So, as the model is spinning, um, vibrations are added to the specimen. The reason for the uh, centrifuge is to correctly model the overburden pressure. Verification of liquefaction analysis by centrifuge studies has determined that the centrifuge can be used for numerically verify calculations. Uh, they also determined that the model could not predict numerical values, but can prove them true or untrue. Uh, unfortunately, the model also does not model well the stress pass and boundary conditions.